Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to run a t-test when you are given the data. For this particular example, the way that I'm going to do this is I am going to show you um, how to find the rejection region on a t-table, and then we will make our decision based on the rejection region. I am going to use Excel to help us find some of the sample statistics because those are not given to us. All right, so let's get started. What we have here is an article claims that the average number of states that adults in the US have visited is 12. So this is a statement about the entire population, and this is going to be our claim that we are going to test. A random sample of 10 adults was selected to test this claim, and the data is listed below. Assume the population is normally distributed. At alpha equals 0 0.05, is there enough evidence to reject the article's claim? All right, so when you're doing hypothesis testing, before you start, you always want to determine what kind of hypothesis test you're going to use. I know I told you which one we are going to use, but I want to make sure that I write down the um, write down the conditions that are needed in order to run the t-test. I have taught from multiple textbooks and I have found that in different textbooks they have different requirements. So make sure that you check with your text because your conditions might be slightly different than the one I'm working with currently. All right, so the first thing that we wanna know is, is since it's a test about the mean, we wanna know is sigma known? And sigma, remember, is the population standard deviation. So we're looking to see, is the population standard deviation known? And if you look through here, there is no indication of any kind of standard deviation. Since we are given a sample, we can find the sample standard deviation. So the answer to this question is no, but we can find the sample standard deviation. And like I said, I am going to use Excel to help me find that. Um, I do have other videos that show you how to do this in the TI-84 um, graphing calculator, so you can check that one out if you have that kind of calculator. All right, so the next thing that is very important when you are doing hypothesis testing is that you have a random sample. So we can see right here that we do have a random sample. And then in order for the central limit theorem to kick in, we either have to have one of two things. We either have to have a sample size that is greater than or equal to 30, or the population has to be normally distributed. So one of these two things needs to be true. If both of them are true, that's fine. It's just even better. Okay, so for this one, if we look through, we can see that we can assume that the population is normally distributed. And like I said, it is possible that your text has some slightly different ones because I have taught from different texts and I have seen several different conditions depending upon the text. Um, but these are the conditions that I'm going to write for now. So we can use the t-test. And typically we just call it the t-test. If you wanted to put the t-test for the mean, that would be acceptable as well. So once you decide which test you are going to use, your next step is going to be setting up the null and the alternative hypotheses. Okay, so if we go back into there, this is where we look at the claim. And we already showed that the claim is that the mean or the average, remember that average and mean are interchangeable. And when we are setting up, this is talking about the entire population, so we do use mu as our symbol. We don't ever put x bar in the null and the alternative because that's the sample mean, and the sample mean can be found. We are making a claim about the population mean based on a sample. So we would use mu is 12, which means that we would write mu equals 12. 
And this would be our claim. Knowing what the claim is about will help you with your interpretation. It's very important that you interpret your findings correctly. So our alternative would be that mu is not equal to 12. Okay, so when you go to draw your picture, you know that you need to shade both tails since this is a two-tail test. The type of test, whether it's left tail, right tail, or two tail, always depends on the alternative hypothesis. And since the alternative hypothesis is not equal, that means that we are going to be running a two tail test. All right, so no matter what test you're running, it's always a good idea to draw out your model. For this one, we are going to draw our model based on the critical values and rejection region. So in order to find this, we need to know our sample size, which was 10, and we need to know our degrees of freedom, which is nine. Okay, and then we are going to find our critical value, and depending upon which text you're using, they use different notations. Some texts don't even show this method at all. Okay, so I am going to use T not as my critical value, you could also use T star. Okay, so my critical value, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my T distribution table. We have a two tail test, so we're gonna find 0 0.05 because that's my alpha level. I forgot to write it down, but it did say up above that the alpha was 0 0.05. Okay, so we would go on here to two tail 0 0.05 and we would come down to nine and we find that it's 2.262. Since it is a two tail test, we have to make sure that we put both the positive and the negative. So we would have positive negative 2.262, let me correct that, 2.262. So over here, we would go to where we feel 2.262 is and we would shade on both sides. So we would say that our T naught is positive 2.262 and our negative 2.2.62. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to see after we calculate our standardized test statistic, we want to see if it falls in the rejection region. So this becomes our rejection region. Anything that is smaller than negative 2.6, negative 2.262 or larger than positive 2.262 would make you reject the null hypothesis and lead towards the alternative being true. If the value that we get for our standardized test statistic T falls in between these two values, then we fail to reject, okay? So the formula that we use to find T is we use the formula T equals the sample mean minus the population mean, which is always going to be whatever is in the claim. So we would use the 12 for that, divided by S over the square root of our sample size. Okay, so what we are going to do is we have to find X bar since we don't know that and we have to find S. We know everything else, but we are missing X bar and S. Since we are given the actual data, the 8, 5, 13, 23, 8, 5, 15, 9, 10, and 6 as our sample data, we are then going to go and plug this into the formula. So like I said, we have to find X bar and we have to find S. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Excel. I've already put the data into here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the mean by typing in the formula equals average and you can select it, just make sure that it selects it, and then you can highlight your cells and hit enter, and it will automatically calculate the mean for you, so you don't have to individually do it. For the standard deviation, I'm going to do equals S, um, ST, DEV.S, make sure you use S because that is the sample standard deviation, the P is the population standard deviation. So we would use the standard deviation dot S and it didn't, sorry, let me start over again. Sometimes when I click it the first time, it doesn't accept it. All right, and then I hit enter and we see that it's 5.5377893. Okay, so we can come over here and say that X bar is 10.2 
and S is approximately 5.55378. Okay, so you can just put those in. That's a good decimal approximation. As long as you go at least four places with this, um, the more places you go, the more accurate your result is going to be. And then you would just simply plug this into a calculator. So I would do 10.2 minus, remember we said that the population mean is whatever is in the null hypothesis, so that would be 12, over S, which is 5.553778, divided by the square root of 10. Okay, you can do hand calculations for these two. I just don't advise it because you're going to make a lot of mistakes, especially with this. So I would use Excel or a graphing calculator that can find the sample standard deviation in order to find this. I would not do hand calculations unless you absolutely have to just because of the amount of time that it will take. So after you plug this into your calculator, we end up with t is negative 1.02. So we can come over here and we can see that even though um, it is below the mean of 12, it wasn't exactly 12, we got 10.2, but the standardized test statistic is not in the rejection region. So the conclusion that we would make on this is that we would fail to reject And remember that your conclusions that you can make are either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And I'm gonna put on here a reason since it's not in the rejection region. So that way you know why you're failing to reject. Like I said, if I would have got something like 2.5 or negative 2.3, then you would have rejected. All right, so our last step, I know that this is a very, very long process. Um, the more times you do it, the easier it gets. Okay, um, the last thing that we want to do is we want to write our findings. What did we find from this? And again, depending upon textbooks, there are certain um, vocabulary that is required by certain textbooks. And I know AP Statistics is very, very picky about how you write it. So make sure that you refer to whatever texts you are using to make sure that you put it in the form that you are required to. Okay. Um, but one way of doing this is if you are using, um, if your claim is about the null hypothesis and you're going to use the word reject, if the alter claim is about the alternative, then you're going to use the word support. Okay, you always want to reference your alpha levels. So we would say that at 5%, because our alpha level was 0 0.05 as a percent, that's 5%. Humans understand this. Most people understand 5% much better than they do alpha equals 0 0.05. Okay. So at 5%, there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that the average number of states a U.S. adult has visited is 12. So based on this sample, sample, sorry, based on this sample, the claim appears to be valid. Okay, we don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is indeed true. Um, because remember that when you are running these, there is always the possibility that you had an unusual sample. And if you picked a different sample, you could get different results. Because this is a sample size of size 10, it could go either way. Like samples of size 10, you're gonna have a lot more variability. So there's a lot more room for error with smaller samples. So you could repeat this with a much larger sample if you want it to be more accurate. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.